My name is Kayla with Bay Alarm Medical, and I'm here with Dr. Alexandra Nelson at UCSF. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here? Sure. I'm a junior faculty member here at UCSF, and I split my time between studying diseases like Huntington's disease in the laboratory and also caring for patients with Huntington's disease and their families in the clinic. Okay. Um, so I understand you want to learn a little bit about Huntington's disease um, for your viewers. So Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative condition that it unfortunately runs in families. It's inherited and it's called an autosomal dominant disorder because a patient needs to only inherit one bad copy of the gene that causes Huntington's disease to develop the disease. So that means that if a parent has Huntington's disease, there's a 50% chance that they will pass that gene on to each child that they have. So Huntington's disease, unfortunately, is a disease that strikes in midlife. So it can strike in childhood, it can strike in late life, but oftentimes hits people in the prime of life in their 30s, 40s, 50s. And it's a neurodegenerative condition, which means that it affects areas of the brain and causes a gradual loss of cells in that area of the brain over time. What this means for patients is that they develop symptoms which progress over time, and these kinds of symptoms include difficulty controlling their movement, difficulty with thinking and memory, and difficulty with controlling their emotions and behaviors. And you can imagine with these kinds of symptoms that it causes a lot of pain and suffering for patients yeah, and their families. And particularly because it's an inherited condition, uh, the whole family has to cope with Huntington's disease, from the children to the parents to the spouses, the brothers and sisters, who end up often being the caregivers for patients right. who are suffering from Huntington's disease. If someone does have uh, someone in their family that has a Huntington's, would you recommend getting tested for the disease or for the gene? So it's an individual decision about whether to be tested if you don't yet have symptoms of Huntington's disease, but when people have symptoms, I absolutely encourage them to be tested sure. because then you can confirm that it is indeed Huntington's disease that's causing the symptoms that you're suffering from. And then that helps your physician and your family to help you develop the right kind of therapeutic approach to dealing yeah. with these symptoms because there are many therapies that reduce the symptoms of Huntington's disease, even okay. though we unfortunately don't have a cure for the disease. Okay. Um, you mentioned that sometimes, uh, or some patients can get it earlier in life. Is there a difference in the symptoms that they experience? So it varies from person to person and family to family when the disease begins and actually also the particular symptoms that they might develop. Sometimes there are even two siblings in the same family that might even have the same age of onset but have different kinds of symptoms. For example, one family member might have predominantly movement symptoms, so a lot of involuntary movements, which are called chorea. Another family member might have a lot of psychiatric symptoms like depression or anxiety or irritability. These are very common features in Huntington's disease. Eventually, most people develop all of these kinds of symptoms, but the particular mixture and which symptoms come first varies from person to person. There are some rare cases where people have very young onset when they're children or teenagers, but the most common onset of the disease is in middle age. Okay. Um, and then I see you have a model of a brain here. Can you? Yeah. So if you think about uh, Huntington's disease, it actually strikes a particular region of the brain, actually two main regions of the brain. So this is a brain from the side view, and this outer part of the brain is called the cortex. And if you look inside the brain, this is looking at the middle part of the brain if you cut down the center. Uh, there are areas that are deep inside the brain that are called the basal ganglia. And one of these areas, the striatum, is the area where Huntington's disease begins. And actually, this is the area that neurodegenerates in Huntington's disease. And actually, if you look at a picture from a patient that had Huntington's disease, this is a slice of the brain. Actually, if you took a section this way through the brain, uh, this is a section of an autopsy specimen from a normal patient and then a patient who had Huntington's disease. And you can see these areas labeled C and P are the caudate and the putamen, which together form the striatum. And this region is nice and plump in this normal patient, but in this patient with Huntington's disease who had had Huntington's for many, many years, this area of the brain oh, wow. has gradually shrunken over many, many years. So speaking of the control of movement and everything, someone that doesn't know anything about the disease, what would they notice in a person that 
had Huntington's disease as just an outsider looking in, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what symptoms would they be able to identify? Yeah. So the classic symptom of Huntington's disease is something called chorea, which are random involuntary movements that can affect any part of the body, including the face, the arms, the legs. Like twitching or shaking? Or it's, it looks, uh, it's not jolt-like so much as sort of a random flowing kind of movement, oh, okay. uh, sometimes even dance-like. Uh, this is the classic movement abnormality in patients with Huntington's disease, and actually it's one of the most treatable aspects of Huntington's disease. The thing that's more difficult to perceive, I think, from the outside are the other symptoms of Huntington's sure. disease, such as the cognitive impairment and the psychological changes that the disease causes. And so the very earliest symptoms are actually not usually visible on the outside, but actually are occurring inside. And these are symptoms like depression, anxiety, crankiness, um, anger and irritability, impulsivity. Uh, and these are often very difficult because the patients themselves may not realize that these changes are occurring. Their spouse or brothers and sisters sure, may not realize where these symptoms are coming from. That's like every other person in the world Absolutely. gets cranky. <laughs> right, exactly. So these things are difficult to perceive at the beginning and only sometimes after they've been going on for years do people realize actually these are the beginnings of their Huntington's disease. Wow. So family members will often tell me my partner has has really was never like this before. They were always very easygoing, and their personality has changed a little bit. Okay. They become more irritable, and this is a sign that the Huntington's disease is beginning. And this symptom, even though it is troublesome, it can be managed with medications as well as well as therapy. So someone that can get Huntington's disease doesn't necessarily mean that. So can their parents not have it, neither one of their parents, and they still have it? There are cases uh, where a person is the first one in their family to develop Huntington's. It's estimated that between 5 and 10 percent of all patients that we see with Huntington's disease, they're the first person in wow. their family that's known. They have no family history of the disease. There's a variety of explanations for that, but in many cases there's a new mutation in that gene that allows that person to develop Huntington's disease, whereas their parents did not. That's crazy. You know, I read somewhere about clinical trials. Um, can you go into a little bit about that? Yeah, so there's a there are a number of different clinical trials for new medications for Huntington's disease. Some of them are aimed at reducing the symptoms and, but not changing the underlying disease process. And there are other clinical trials, some of which are actually starting later this year, which involve medications which are aimed actually at the protein that is believed to be abnormal in Huntington's disease and actually to reduce the level of that protein and hopefully prevent or delay the onset of disease symptoms. Sure. Um, am I correct that it is, they compare it to um, kind of a mixture of Parkinson's, ALS, and um, well, uh, Alzheimer's? Is yeah, that right? I think that's a great analogy. So like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease or ALS, Huntington's is a neurodegenerative disease. and like those other diseases, it has a combination of effects on the control of the body, such as ALS, which causes progressive weakness over right. time, and the control of the mind, like Alzheimer's disease, which affects the cognition or memory of a patient over time. Huntington's disease, unfortunately, symptoms. does both. Yeah. And Huntington's has a lot of similarities to Parkinson's disease. Because of the motor functions. Because it affects movement and affects balance and speech and swallowing. And these are all really, unfortunately, aspects of Huntington's disease That's as well. That's so terrible. Um, so can you tell me what HDSA hopes to achieve by raising awareness for Huntington's disease? Yeah, so Huntington's Disease Society of America, or HDSA, is really the biggest patient uh, and physician advocacy group for Huntington's disease. It's a, a means by which we all communicate in the HD community and try to raise awareness about the disease, the help that we are able to provide to patients and families with Huntington's disease, and actually try to get more people in, in the fold with regard to the knowledge that we have about Huntington's disease. Uh, the HDSA website is a fantastic resource for patients, families, interested community members to get involved. The HDSA website has information about support groups, about clinical research that's going on if people want to get involved in research but also um, fundraising events like uh, sure. walks that are going on in individual communities around the country. Great. Uh, I just want to thank you a lot for your time today. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. And thank you. For more information on Huntington's disease, please visit hdsa.org or bayalarmmedical.com.